Hey, have you heard? The good folks from Farnham are giving away a gorgeous, decked out Farnham 75th anniversary John Deere Gator filled with $1,000 worth of Farnham horse care products. Visit www.farnham.com backslash 75 dash giveaway to see the prizes and enter for a chance to win. Again, that is www.farnham.com backslash 75 dash giveaway. Happy 75th anniversary, Farnham. Thank you for always being our partner in horse care. This is Chelsea Schaefer, and this is season four of The Score. You all have listened to this podcast three quarters of a million times, and we are here in season four to bring you even more of what you love. Team Rovers! It's Tuesday, and you know what that means. It means it's another episode of The Short Score, brought to you by our friends at Farnham. You guys, it's Caitlin Gustav, and on this episode, I'm going to walk you through some results from uh, recent pro rodeos and a little bit of update from the Ariat World Series of Team Roping, Um, and then you're going to be able to listen to a roping tip from roping.com. So, to start off, let's get some pro rodeo stuff worked out. So, the Las Vegas days happened in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the winners of that, it was a split win. It was Zane Burnson and Cole Wilson and Tyler Waters and Tyler McKnight. They were five and six, and that paid $1,722 per man. Uh, guys are already getting money racked in for that 2022 pro rodeo season. Also, they had the Brawley Cattle Call Rodeo in Brawley, California. And the winners of that were Tanner Baldwin and Seth Hall. They were 5'2". And that paid $2,170 per man. So awesome. Guys are getting circuit money. They're getting Pro Rodeo World Standings money won. Can't wait to see what happens in the 2022 season. But before we get there, we we can't get there yet. We have to finish off with the NFR, which is weeks away. And I cannot wait to see who is going to come out on top, who's going to win the average and have a very successful week in Las Vegas. But before we get there, we got to talk some WPRA stuff because the WPRA finals happened in Waco, Texas, and world champs were crowned yet again. So in that all-around race, it's the one and only Kelsey Chase Stomer. She is phenomenal. She entered the tie down again. She was in the breakaway. She's in the team roping, and she had a successful year. So she is your all-around world champion this year. In the breakaway was Josie Connor, and in the team roping, if you couldn't guess it, I don't know what to tell you. Larry D. Guy won the heading world title, and Annette Stahl took home the healing world title. So that's awesome. Congratulations to those ladies, and we can't wait to see one more lady win a gold buckle come NFR time for the national finals of breakaway roping. So, so many world titles to be won this year. All right, so World Series. Are you guys gearing up for the World Series finale in Las Vegas? Because there's so much fun stuff that's going to be happening, and we cannot wait to see who's going to be taking home big, big paychecks. The roster should be coming out soon, so everyone keep your eyes out for that if you haven't received it already. And it's going to kick off Saturday, December 4th, with the Gold Buckle Beer Open to the World Finale starting at noon and then finishing that day with the 15 and a half and going all week long until Saturday, December 11th, where they're going to finish out the area world series finale with the eight and a half resist all world series of team roping finale. So, so much money to be won. So much fun. I know a lot of people are excited that it's going to be back in Vegas this year. I know last year in 2020 was a little bit of a whirlwind for everyone, but We all made it through, and everyone is ready to be back at the South Point Arena. All right, so I told you just a little bit of coverage today, and now we're going to finish off and let you guys listen to a scoring drill with Tanner Tomlinson from Roping.com. So Trevor Brazil and Miles Baker, they worked with the young header and the 2020 Resistol Rookie Header of the Year, Tanner Tomlinson, on keeping his horse square and straight in the corner. And in this process, they demonstrated a drill 
that any roper can use to help their horse score. So I hope you guys enjoy this roping tip and enjoy the rest of your week with lots of roping involved. And we'll talk at you soon. We were discussing pressure on the reins earlier today and Tanner Thomason was over here. Uh, we were just scoring different horses different ways and the horse he was on uh, was more seasoned, I guess you'd say. He'd been rodeoed on a lot and was probably a little tougher in ways and what we were riding are greener horses so we're we're building them up to where instead of being able to hold 10 pounds of pressure we want to start being able to hold 20 or 30 and the really the deal with the benefit of more pressure is a faster release but what Tanner was horse was doing would when he would hold too much pressure he would bow his shoulders out and he wouldn't stand up in the bridle so Trevor was having him do a, dr a drill to keep him framed up and he would ride him forward and back him up straight, ride him forward and back him up straight because the horse would want to lean and step out in his hind end or put his front end over here. And especially for a guy like Tanner, uh, Trevor can explain it better, but when a horse is cocked leaning and a guy like Tanner that can reach a long ways, if that horse doesn't run across the line and give him a few honest strides going to the cow, it's hard for him to get a throw off right here. So of anybody he needs them to be straight yeah well I, I think everybody needs them to be straight uh the only thing is is if it takes a horse when he's in line what i call their shoulders and hips are in line they're real deliberate moves and they get they get caught up faster they're faster race horses don't run bowed they run straight and if you can get your horse lined up more square in the box rather than if you're having to hold him here and he's leaning it may take three strides to get you the same distance as two good strides when their hips and shoulders are in line and that's what i told him i said if you'll just work on that your horses don't have to give you very many strides obviously because he's so gifted with his rope but it'll be it'll be less and it'll be more effective and a horse will learn to cheat less if he if you can keep control of his ribs going to the line or to the score line. And the, the pressure on the reins, I think for him was, he he was real loose. And when the gates would bang, his horse would leak and he would pick up and then it gave his horse a chance to give his ribs or move around. As opposed to if he could hold pressure on his reins and get a good flat go from the beginning, it was gonna be better off for him than getting a lot of movement. And this was, this was just a horse he was trying and so we were kind of experimenting, but the horse, wanted to kind of be a little bit light in the front end, kind of pat his feet and have busy feet or kind of float a little bit right there. And that's where most people say, oh, you got to be real light. I'm the opposite. I want to start giving them cues to go forward and come back. And I go forward and back in the box until those horses understand or they get tired of doing it to where they wait for me to ask them to go forward and they wait for me to pull for them to go back. So that they're not just moving their feet just to move them. We actually give them a deliberate goal for their feet. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Miles Trevor, for this awesome tip with Tanner Tomlinson. Um, if you guys are wanting any more tips, want to learn more, head on over to roping.com. Use promo code THESCORE15. That is T-H-E-S-C-O-R-E-1-5 to receive 15% off your membership.